Hello everyone and welcome to the extension part of recurring decimals as fractions. Here we're going to extend our knowledge a little further by applying it to more complex questions. Firstly, let's recap. Remember, in most cases, this type of question will be in the non-calculator assessment. The required skills for this tutorial are subtraction of decimals, simplifying of fractions and division. It's important to remember the notation that we use to represent our recurring decimals, as well as recognizing when to multiply by 10 when we have one recurring decimal, when to multiply by 100 when we have two recurring decimals, or when we multiply by 1000 when we have three recurring decimals. So let's make a start by looking at our first question. This question asks us to write the recurring decimal 2.14 recurring as a fraction in its simplest form. Now looking back at the previous video, see if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. So let's start by identifying what 2.14 recurring means. Well, as you can see, we have a dot above the 1 and the 4. So therefore, the 1 and the 4 are the only digits that recur. Just like we did in the last video, let's identify x to be a recurring decimal. Here, because we have two digits that recur, it's clear to see we multiply by 100. So therefore, 100x equals 214.14. Notice how we've kept to two decimal places, because this makes subtraction easy. Now let's label equation 1 and equation 2 and subtract. Well, we know 100x equals 214.14 recurring, and x is equal to 2.14 recurring. Those 0.14 recurring subtract from each other give nothing. 4 subtract 2 is 2, 1 subtract 0 is 1, and 2 subtract 0 is 2 giving 99x's is equal to 212. Just like we've done before, let's identify x as a fraction. We simply divide by 99. So we have 212 divided by 99. Now by quick inspection, let's see if we can cancel down or simplify our fraction any further. Well, our numerator is even, but our denominator is not, so we know we can't divide by 2. Let's see if we can divide by 3. Well, we can definitely divide the denominator by 3, so let's look at the numerator. Using our trick, adding up the digits, 2 add 1 add 2 makes 5. 5 is not a multiple of 3, so therefore we know 3 is not a factor. So, 2.14 recurring as a fraction in its simplest form is 212 over 99. Now let's have a look at a slightly different question. Here it states, Sally divided a two-digit number by another two-digit number. Her answer is 3.1818818, so on and so forth. We're asked to find two numbers that Sally could have used. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. So let's start by identifying what 3.1818 represents. Well here you can see 3.181818 is exactly the same as 3.18 with the dot above the 1 and the dot above the 8. This indicates that the 1 and the 8 are recurring. So just like before, let's use algebra. So x is equal to 3.18 recurring. Because we have two digits that recur, Let's multiply by 100. Therefore, we know 100x is 318.18 recurring. Notice how we've kept to two decimal places. Now labeling equation 1 and equation 2, let's subtract. Here you can see the 0.18 recurring subtract the 0.18 recurring gives nothing. The 8 subtract the 3 gives the 5. 1 subtract 0 is 1. 3 subtract 0 is 3. So therefore, 99x is equal to 315. 
Now let's find the value of x by simply dividing by 99. So we have 315 over 99. Now let's see if we can simplify our fraction anymore. We can divide the denominator by 3, so can we divide the numerator by 3? Let's sum the digits and find out. 3 add 1 add 5 is 9. 9 is a multiple of 3, so therefore we can divide the numerator and denominator by 3. Remember, it's a non-calculator assessment, so take your time. How many 3's go into 3, 1? How many 3's go into 1, 0? What's left over the 1? And how many 3's go into 15, 5? So therefore, we can cancel down 315 over 99 by 3 to give us 105 over 33. Now we might be able to cancel this down a little more by 3, so let's check. Well, we can definitely divide 33 by 3, so let's look at the numerator. 1 and 0 at 5 is 6, so we know the numerator can be divided by 3. Taking our time, let's see if we can divide. How many times does 3 go into 1? None. But how many times does 3 go into 10? 3. Remaining 1. How many times does 3 go into 15? 5. So therefore, we know x is 35 over 11 in its simplest form. Going back to our question, we can see it asks for a two-digit number by a two-digit number. So therefore, Sally could use 315 by 99, but they're not two digits. We could use 105 by 33, but they're not two digits. So our final answer is 35 by 11. Now let's look at a different question. Here the question wants us to use algebra to show the recurring decimal 2.24 recurring is equal to A over B where a and b are integers to be found and a is greater than b. We also need to identify a, b as a fraction in its simplest form. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Well, just like before, let's identify 2.24 recurring as a decimal. Here you can see the dot is above the 4, so therefore the only digit that recurs is the 4. Now using the same method as we have in the previous questions, let's identify x to be 2.24 recurring. Because we only have one digit that recurs, we multiply by 10 giving us 10x is equal to 22.44 recurring. Notice how we've kept to two decimal places for when we subtract later. Now let's label equation 1 and equation 2 and subtract. Here you can see the 4 recurring subtract the 4 recurring is nothing. The 4 subtract the 2 is the 2. Keeping our decimal place, 2 subtract 2 is nothing and 2 subtract 0 is 2. Therefore, 9x is equal to 20.2. Now let's find the value of x. Well, x is 20.2 over 9. Because the question wanted us to write it as a fraction, by definition, and from the question, we need to write a and b as integers. So let's multiply the numerator and denominator by 10, giving 202 over 90. You might be able to see both the numerator and the denominator are even, so let's divide by 2. This gives us x is equal to 101 over 45. Therefore, we know a is 101 and b is 45, satisfying our question stating that a and b have to be integers and a is greater than b. Now let's look at another question. Here the question wants us to convert 8.96 recurring into a mixed fraction in its simplest form. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. So let's start by identifying what 8.96 recurring means. Well, you can see the dot is above the 6, so this is the only digit that recurs. Just like before, Let's identify x to be our recurring decimal. From our question, you can see that the 6 is the only digit that recurs. Therefore, we multiply by 10, 
giving us 10x to be 89.66 recurring. Keeping to our two decimal places because it helps with the subtraction later on. Now identifying equation 1 and equation 2, let's subtract. Well, 89.66 recurring subtract 8.96 recurring, you can see the 6 recurring cancels out. 6 subtract 9, well we can't do, so let's borrow from the 9, giving 16 subtract 9 to give 7. 8 subtract 8 is nothing, and 8 subtract 0 is 8. Therefore, we know 9x is equal to 80.7. Let's find the value of x by dividing by 9. Because by definition we want to find it as a fraction, we need to make our numerator and denominator whole numbers. So let's multiply by 10. Therefore, we have 807 over 90. Now let's see if we can simplify our fraction any more by dividing by a factor. Well, we can see the denominator can be divided by 3, but let's see if the numerator can be divided by 3. 8 add 0 add 7 is 15, and 15 is a multiple of 3. So therefore, we can divide both the numerator and denominator by 3. So, taking our time in the non-calculator assessment, how many 3's go into 8, 2 remaining 2? How many 3's go into 20, 6 remaining 2? And how many 3's go into 27, 9? Therefore, we know our simplified fraction is 269 over 30. Because the question wanted us to write the answer as a mixed fraction, how many 30's go into 269? Well, 8. So, what's left over? Well, given 8 times 30 is 240, we have 29 remaining, so our final answer is 8 and 29 over 30. Now let's have a look at a slightly harder question. Here the question wants us to use algebra to write the value of 0.136 recurring times 0.2 recurring as a fraction in its simplest form. Well, let's start by identifying what 0.136 recurring is as a decimal. Here you can see the dot is above the 3 and the 6, so therefore the 3 and the 6 are the only digits that recur. Now, just like before, let's identify x to be 0.136 recurring. We have two digits that recur, so therefore we multiply by 100, giving 100x equals 13.636 recurring. Notice how we've kept to these three decimal places. Now, let's label equation 1 and equation 2 and subtract. Here you can see the 3, 6 recurring subtract the 3, 6 recurring is nothing. The 6 subtract the 1 is the 5. The 3 subtract the 0 is 3. And the 1 subtract the 0 is 1. Therefore, we know 99x is equal to 13.5. Finding the value of x, we know x is equal to 13.5 over 99. Converting this to a fraction, multiplying the numerator and denominator by 10, we have 135 over 990. Here you might be able to see the last digit of our numerator and denominator is a 5 and 0, so therefore we can divide both the numerator and denominator by 5. Taking our time working this out, how many 5's go into 1? None. But how many 5's go into 13? 2. Remaining 3. How many 5's go into 35? 7. A nice little trick to divide by 5 is to divide by 10 and then double it. So 135 divided by 10 is 13.5, doubled is 27. 990 divided by 10 is 99, doubled is 198. So this means we have 27 over 198. Here you might be able to see we can also divide by 9. 27 divided by 9 is easy, so let's do 198 divided by 9. How many 9's go into 1? None. But how many 9's go into 19? 2 remaining 1. How many 9's go into 18? 2. So therefore, we can cancel down our fraction of 27 over 198 into 3 over 22. Now let's repeat the same process with 0.2 recurring. Here you can see the dot is above the 2, so therefore the 2 is the only digit that recurs. Just like before, let's use algebra, but instead let's call this y. Now we know y is equal to 0.2 recurring.
because we only have one digit that recurs, we multiply by 10. So we know 10y is equal to 2.2 recurring. Identifying our equations and then simply subtracting, we have the point 0.2 recurring subtract point 0.2 recurring gives nothing. 2 subtract 0 gives 2. And 10y subtract our y gives us our 9y. Therefore, we know 9y is equal to 2. Working out y, we know y is equal to 2 over 9. Now we know 0.136 recurring is 3 over 22. And we know 0.2 recurring is 2 ninths. Let's complete our calculation but in fractions. 3 over 22 multiplied by 2 over 9. Using our skills on multiplication, 3 times 2 is our 6. 22 times the 9 is 198. Because the question wanted us to write it in its simplest form, we can divide both the numerator and denominator by 6 using our skills on division. So, our final answer to 0.136 recurring multiplied by 0.2 recurring is 1 over 33. Now let's have a look at our last question. Here the question wants us to work out 3.3 .3 recurring subtract 2.5, giving our answer in its simplest form. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. So let's start by looking at the 3.3 .3 recurring. Well, 3.3 .3 recurring is exactly the same as 3.33, .3, so on and so forth, because you can see the dot is above the 3, and that's the only digit that recurs. Just like before, let's label this x. Because we only have one digit that recurs, we multiply by 10, giving 10x to be 33.3 .3 recurring ensuring we keep to one decimal place for our subtraction. From here, let's label equation 1 and equation 2 and subtract. The point 3 recurring subtract the point 3 recurring is nothing. 3 subtract 3 is 0. 3 subtract 0 is 3. 10x subtract our x is 9x, so we know 9x is equal to 30. From here, finding the value of x, we know x is equal to 30 over 9. Now, let's simplify by dividing both the numerator and denominator by a highest common factor of 3. This gives us a final answer of x to be 10 over 3. So we've converted 3.3 .3 recurring into a fraction. Now let's convert 2.5 into an improper fraction. Well, 2 multiplied by 2 Add the 1 gives us our 5 over our denominator of 2. So, we know 3.3 .3 recurring is 10 over 3, and we know 2.5 is exactly the same to 5 over 2. Using our skills on subtraction of fractions, I'm going to make the denominators both 6. Simply multiplying the numerator and denominator by 2, we have 20 over 6. Multiplying the numerator and denominator by 3, we have 15 over 6. Therefore, 3.3 .3 recurring take away 2.5 is equal to 20 subtract our 15, which is 5, keeping our denominator 6. So, in summary, based on the last video and this video, we're able to use these required skills, understanding the notation of recurring decimals, and acknowledging when to multiply by 10, 100 and 1000 to convert a recurring decimal into a fraction with simple and more complex questions. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.